G4 TV, also known as G4, was an American-made premium television channel in the early 2000s. Officially launched in 2002, the show was best known for its coverage of video games and was able to amass a significant following in subsequent years. For over a decade, the channel produced content that pertained to pop culture topics, video game themes, and comedy skits, but in 2012, they were subjected to a bit of a relaunch. When a licensing deal was struck with NBC Universal, the rights to G4 TV were acquired by the Hearst Corporation in December of 2012. The intention was to fold this channel into the Esquire network, which produced metrosexual variety content and non-sports related male programming. However, in 2013, the deal was stalled, and eventually, towards the end of that year, the network was dropped by all major providers. This was the death of G4 TV until the next revival. For many people, G4 was the channel they grew up watching. This was not a run-of-the-mill cookie-cutter project on cable, it was something legitimately unique at the time. G4 was largely successful, and by the end of its lifespan in 2013, over 60 million homes, which is 50%, around 50% of all American households with television, were receiving the network. G4 was a success, and millions of people today can remember exactly why. This was a network that tackled something before its time, and now, in 2021 and 2022, G4 has been revived. The official resurrection came in November of 2021, but in the preceding months there were a variety of hints and teaser releases. In 2020, for example, there was a Thanksgiving holiday special, including old hosts of the show that seemed to be still involved with the project. In April of 2021, there was a show announcement in partnership with the WWE, and for many fans of the network, from a long time ago, this relaunch was a dream come true. Everything seemed great, the program was revived, the fans could be excited. All of it was being streamed online with a focus on YouTube and Twitch, making it more accessible. But then, disaster. One of the changes made while the network was being resurrected pertained to their hosting staff. Previously, Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb had occupied the role, but now there was a replacement named Indiana Black, also known as Froskerin Online. Froskerin was a previous League of Legends community member who not only participated in the professional coaching scene, but also served as a caster in the LPL. By all discernible metrics, she has a great deal of gaming industry experience, and as G4 TV officially relaunched, she became the newest member of its hosting staff. Over the next eight or so weeks, Froskerin had a number of blunders. Setting aside one's personal feelings on who she is or how she acts, there were a series of claims that caused mild backlash with G4's audience. An example would be the claim that Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy is going to be an Xbox exclusive. This is factually untrue, and in an industry where millions of people bicker about which plastic video game box is better than the other plastic video game box, and exclusives are often used as a weapon in that particular argument, she started to receive some backlash. Another good example for context is her opinions on Sony, and keep in mind, Sony has some of the most dedicated and hostile fanboys I've ever seen. Froskerin seemed to believe that Sony was, or is, dead in the water. She heavily favored Xbox in all discussions, and ignored key details about the console gaming scene entirely, which further exacerbated a situation where certain diehard fans of the PlayStation ecosystem in particular were extremely judgmental of her. Justified or not is irrelevant here, because this judgment and frustration spilled over in early January of 2022. During a live stream, Froskerin was asked to rant about something, and made a hard pivot from Red Dead Redemption 2 Online into sexism. She began to effectively yell about chat comments, derogatory remarks, objectification, and inappropriate behavior. She drew comparisons to previous hosts, namely Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb, while accusing the wider gaming space of being specifically prejudicial, judgmental, and dismissive of women in the industry, with a special focus on her own audience. She told viewers to turn the channel if they didn't like her, that the content is free and they have no reason to be there if they're unhappy, but honestly, I'm not really able to express precisely what this speech was and exactly why it caused such a massive amount of backlash without just showing it to you. It's three minutes long and everyone should feel free to skip it. I would completely understand, but it's necessary to fully demonstrate why the reaction became what it is now. I show this for context, keep in mind. There is no legal justification for a copyright dispute here, so don't even think about it. But I actually want to talk about something so much more important than Red Dead Online. Sexism in gaming. In joining G4... Yes! In, this is not where I thought we were going, I know, but I'm here. I have no here. idea. I'm listening. Yeah. In joining G4, I was ecstatic to be part of something that I grew up watching as a child. But every time G4 is brought up in various channels, 
even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us, I can see you, without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. Ooh. It's somehow- Talk to him, Frost! It has somehow been expected that you can talk about how much you jerked off to women as a compliment. That it's not weird. a compliment. It's weird. It's dehumanizing and it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Hey, she cooking, y'all. And that's just <laughs> obvious sexism. You don't need to explicitly objectify women or declare that you hate women to be sexist. Just go ahead and check out Thorne's latest meltdown on Twitter for some spark notes. Now, here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. There are too many games for one person to shoulder the burden. So we divide and conquer. And when we use language like we or I, that's the reviewer. That's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review. And that's not to say that Gerard, TBH, Adam, or myself don't contribute to the reviews. We absolutely do. But it'll always be in varying degrees and take a whole team behind us. That's why we're X play and not Adam play. We have done the experiment and controlled for the variables. Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed. And yeah, it also happens to Gerard and TBH, but that doesn't discount the sexism of how it happens to me when it does. Both things can be true, that there is a general hatred of any change that isn't Adam, and that all receive special flame just for being a woman. And I wish I could turn the camera around so that you could see the incredible team that make X-Play. Half of our producers and writers are women. Emily, Abby, Megan, Joe, Jake, Zipper, Gabby, it goes on and on and on. Former writers that are now on ATOS like Vanessa. When you're in our DMs or on those YouTube comments or in Twitch chat right now, those reactionary threads thinking that I'm somehow ruining your current X-Play experience because you can't objectify me how you previously did to Morgan or that I'm somehow less qualified to speak on something but you can't quite put your finger on why even though I'm reading the exact same script as Adam but you have no problem with he's part of it. You're letting your unconscious biases ruin my day and you're gatekeeping the gaming space. So maybe for 2022, we'd be a bit nicer, a bit more self-reflective, and we enjoy the fact that people are working hard to make free content for you. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Peace. That was her rant, and that one three-minute outburst might have literally destroyed the G4 brand. That may sound hyperbolic, like how could that possibly be true, but let me explain. For starters, my own YouTube channel, with just me making content, is larger and mathematically more successful in every single way when compared to G4 TV right now. That's not a brag, it's a fact. And I say this because I am acutely aware of exactly how much money they make on advertisements. I am distinctly familiar with what sponsors will pay when you have viewership particularly like this, and I can effectively evaluate the net worth and monthly income of their YouTube channel. It's a different story for Twitch, somewhat, thus making the complete analysis a little bit more difficult, but G4 TV is being run out of a massive studio. Any of the content that they produce will make that abundantly clear, with multiple separate shows in production right now, and a large number of employees who are working on this content full-time. Their YouTube channel, in totality, makes less than $10,000 a month, probably less than $5,000 a month. And even if you modify that with an expectation that brands and sponsors will jump at the chance to align themselves with a previous household name, they are not producing income from YouTube, at least, that is even remotely close to what they need on a monthly basis. In addition, Froskerin's outburst cost them over 6,000 subscribers. That may seem inconsequential, and it really is. I myself have had little controversies here and there where I lost a thousand or two subscribers as a result, and I recovered just fine, but I don't have a $60,000 overhead. That's obviously a guess. I'm not pin perfect on the math here. I don't know their specific finances, but studio space, benefits, salary and compensation, plus whatever other expenditures they have, and there are many of them, it's almost an economic certainty right now that G4 TV is bleeding cash. When it comes to Twitch, a platform that might be able to pick up some of the slack, it really might, they have additional controversies which honestly can't be ignored. For starters, if you look at their broadcast catalog, there are some serious discrepancies. 
On January 22nd, as part of their Dungeons & Dragons series, G4TV posted Twitch numbers at over 30,000 concurrent viewers for that particular broadcast. That's great, and it lends itself well to the idea that they are fulfilling any and all financial obligations, but it may not be so simple. Flash forward to the next Dungeons & Dragons stream, and the viewership has cratered by over 95%. One stream had 30,000 concurrent live viewers, the other had 1,500. One stream got over half a million total hits, and the other got less than 20,000. And if we do a little bit more digging, things get even worse. If you look at the chat activity, a problem that has been voiced by numerous other YouTubers already, but we can be a little bit more precise here for this one. If you look at the chat activity for these two broadcasts, one being over 20 times larger, keep that in mind, you'll see something very peculiar. VODs give timestamps for chat activity, and with this in mind, it's very helpful, I decided to compare them. For the sake of consistency, I did this numerous times, always choosing the exact same point in each of the broadcasts. Here's an example. At exactly one hour and 30 minutes for each of the broadcasts, I looked at a one minute slice of chat activity. This should have allowed enough time for the stream to reach peak or nearly peak viewership, so that's good. For this one minute time frame, the stream with a supposed 30,000 active viewers and over half a million hits had 24 interactions. That means 24 messages or subscribers who just joined, etc., over the span of one minute. The stream with 1,500 viewers and less than 20,000 hits had 25. The stream with less than 1 20th of the audience had more interactions. This was borne out almost every single time I measured. 51 versus 55, 33 versus 39, 48 versus 42. The chat activity, aside from a couple discrepancies where no one was talking and the number dropped to like 12 or 13 for the large broadcast, the chat activity was almost identical, if not slightly skewed towards the smaller stream, having more interactions. In my professional opinion, this kind of discrepancy between interactions and total viewership is not possible. The one explanation I've heard is that they somehow received the traffic via Twitch homepage features, but I can tell you from personal experience that it does not happen this way. We can look right now on the Twitch homepage and none of the channels are even close to that number because the homepage itself does not award that kind of traffic. I've been on the Twitch homepage before, albeit years ago, and I can attest to the fact that you do not gain 30,000 inactive chat viewers from that position. To me, that would already be definitive, but there's more. One of the programs produced by G4TV is called Attack of the Show. This particular segment is hosted by a man named Kevin Pereira, and Kevin Pereira has a bit of a sordid past when it comes to viewbots. Previously, as in 2004 to 2012, Kevin Pereira hosted the same show under G4 during that time frame, but when the network was shut down, he left. His next venture, which he spearheaded himself, was called The Attack and was aired on Twitch TV. However, when this new venture didn't go as planned, only amassing a few hundred viewers at the time, Kevin Pereira resorted to viewbots. He artificially inflated the metrics and then admitted to doing so while pulling the plug on his failed project and the channel I believe is now banned. And now, after the fact, he is once again a part of the G4TV hosting team. Let's go on a bit of a tangent here. Froskerin, during the now famous rant against sexist gamers, repeatedly mentions prior host Olivia Munn, and compared herself in the sense that she is not as attractive and viewers constantly reference this while harassing her. In no uncertain terms, that kind of behavior is wrong. No one should be jumping into live streams to objectify women or degrade their appearance. Never. Period. However, let's recall that G4TV had a lengthy history as a popular TV program, and we'll go from there. Olivia Munn, a beloved host on the channel prior to Froskerin's employment, used to run a few segments on Kevin Pereira's Attack of the Show. One of those segments involved the panty pile, where Olivia would take her panties off and throw them in a pile, while jokes like Craigslist goldmine were thrown around, and another of her segments was called Olivia's Rack. The camera would just aim at her chest before they discussed other topics from a rack of magazines. You see, G4TV in its heyday was objectifying women for millions of viewers. The show is now a revival of that previous content, and I will stand by the assertion that no one should be degrading a new host for her appearance, obviously, but can we really be surprised that some of them are? G4TV had entire segments that were purely aimed at the physical appearance of the host, and yet Froskerin is ranting and raving about how the audience for that show, which is now revived, the same audience that watches their current content, most likely, at least a large chunk of them, are making comparisons and other remarks about the host. She denigrates their own audience for saying things that align with the previous content. The revival of this show is now distinctly different, and the modern version of Attack of the Show only gets a couple hundred views on Twitch. Sound familiar? Meanwhile, a newly hired host of the reboot yells about how fans are sexist for comparing her to previous women on the program. 
when those women would have segments about their rack and panties. So hopefully we can start to see why this entire thing is an absolute disaster. But we're not done. Another of the show's hosting members is Adam Sessler. Adam Sessler, for some reason, has a long-standing vendetta against Republicans. Not conservatives per se, though I'd be willing to bet he hates them as well, but specifically Republicans in this case. Well, nearly a third of America, which is many tens of millions of people, identify as Republican. And yet Adam Sessler, a G4 TV host, as it emerges in a reboot, right, a long-planned reboot, is all over social media saying that Republicans, as a general group, are stupid racist and drink piss. In fact, he says, quote, just so I can get this out of my system once for the day, end quote, as an ongoing animosity between him and a third of the country, practically, where many of the show's viewers will inevitably belong to that group, just kind of exists and heats up. He's not helping things. I honestly don't know if words can accurately describe the cognitive dissonance of this relaunch. I just have to show you. I'm Speaking about it isn't going to do any good. This is from the original G4 TV programming. This is what the world Great. has been waiting for. Is there a reason that this porno light on me right now? <laughs> yes, there is. Yes, there is. The world has been waiting for a half Chinese, half American girl from the Midwest diving into a giant chocolate film creed, filled cream pie. My friends, this is America at its finest. Drink it up. You be a patriotic biscuit and soak up this sex gravy. Because it's about to get real. Yes. That was G4 TV, and now this is the new version of that same program and network. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Hey, she cooking, y'all. And that's just <laughs> obvious sexism. A once popular video game brand gets rebooted and fundamentally changes the entire program. A new host goes viral with her rant against their own audience, many of whom are returning to the network after being fans of the previous format and shows. And when they start losing subscribers as a result, as people say that the relaunch is failing, they have a 30,000 viewer stream with what can only be described as impossible engagement metrics. Meanwhile, they once again employ the host whose own venture failed when he view botted Twitch because it was failing, and the reboot of his once popular sexually objectifying show is now getting less than a couple hundred views on Twitch, the same position he was in when he viewbotted prior, as the network amplifies a rant against their own fans, and streams are receiving flat out unbelievable, as in they can't be believed, viewership numbers. G4 TV is a disaster. The relaunch, mostly sparked up by an outburst by Froskerin, is almost certainly doomed to failure, as their viewership flounders and they struggle to surpass even moderately sized single person channels. Like, I'm bigger than that entire 15 person outfit. Quite literally. I can't say that I was ever an explicit fan of G4 TV, but the venture was doomed to fail because relaunching a show eight years later with a completely different tone will have no other result than creating conflict with the existing, nostalgic audience, who are the only reason it was popular to begin with. But that's it. G4 TV is still limping down the path, barely, but I can't imagine that that will continue for much longer. Either way, thanks for watching. If you want to support, there are links down below. I'm switching to either Patreon or Locals rather than relying on AdSense, so check those out. There's another YouTuber to check out, merchandise, social media, even a YouTube platform alternative called Odyssey, where you can find all my content. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.